friends ever tell you about a movie, really build it up as the greatest thing ever, and you get so excited about seeing it, and then when you finally do, it just doesn't quite live up to all the hype built up around it? Don't get me wrong, it was a good movie, but not quite as good as everyone else said it was. That's kind of like the ARX. It's a really good gun, but somewhat falls short of what I was hoping for while I've been waiting for it to be made available in the States for over two years. Now Beretta's new Italian stallion has some really innovative features and a few firsts for any gun, and for that it will always be noteworthy. It also functions flawlessly. At the time of this review, we have almost 1,000 rounds to my ARX without a single malfunction. So let's take a closer look at the rifle developed for Italy's Soldato Futuro, the Future Soldier program. Reda's ARX does have some really cool features. Let's start with the magazine releases. There's three of them. There's one right where it is on an AR, and then there's one on the other side for lefties. There's also a magazine release on the bottom by the magazine in a similar position to an AK mag release. But this is a button and not a lever, and don't worry, the mags aren't rock and lock. The charging handle can be flipped from one side to the other without tools or any disassembly of the firearm. Just pull back until you reach this magic point and the handle can be pulled out. This will lock the bolt in place and flip the handle through the ejection port, push the charging handle back in, and the bolt will go into battery, easy as that. The stock is adjustable for length of pull and can be flipped to the side. My first impression of the sights was that they looked really cheap, but after using them a few times they actually work really well. There is of course Picatinny rail at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. On top there's a full length rail for attaching any kind of optics you would like. But also of note the rail under the gun is very short due to the proprietary area where Beretta's GLX grenade launcher would attach. Now Beretta says that they will be selling an accessory rail to cover this area if you need the extra rail space. This isn't a big deal to me personally, but I think that they should include that in the box for the people who do want it because no one here will be attaching to GLX. One of the greatest things about this rifle is the weight. This thing is light weighing in at only 6.8 pounds. It's about half a pound lighter than the Scarlight and the ACR. The bolt release is in a very intuitive spot. It can be activated with the trigger finger if you're right or left-handed. Now this kind of brings up one of my big complaints about the ARX. Out of the box, the controls are extremely stiff to the point that some just don't work. Now I will say, after about 400 rounds or so, things started breaking in and everything started working better. Actually, the entire gun is working better the more rounds we put through it. But first impressions are important, and out of the box, the bolt release would only work if you took your offhand and yanked down on it on both sides. After some break-in, the bolt will release with one finger, as it should. However, if you want to use the control to lock the bolt to the rear, that still takes some doing. Also, out of the box, the AK-style magazine release was almost unusable. Now, after some breaking in, the button works most of the time. But for better reliability, use the AR-style mag releases. The safety is ambidextrous, but it also suffers from this severely stiff control making it hard to just flick it back and forth with your thumb like you should be able to. The most impressive trick the ARX has up its sleeve is the ability to eject out of either side of the firearm. By simply putting a tip of a bullet or something in this hole and activating this switch, the side of ejection can be changed, so left-handers don't have to have brass flying right in front of their face. Now this may not sound like much, but most rifles can't eject out of either side, and the ones that can require you buy a very expensive left-handed bolt to accomplish it. 
The fact that Beretta was able to do all of this in one package is very impressive. The trigger flat out sucks. There's no nice way to put it. It's extremely heavy, crunchy, and gritty. The only positive I can say about it is it appears to be modular, so hopefully someone will have a drop-in trigger available soon to fix it. The other really impressive thing about the ARX is the barrel change. Without any tools, you can remove the barrel from the ARX in seconds. The piston comes with it, and it goes back in just as easy. The ARX does come in a pretty nice soft case, and that does beat the cardboard box that most of the competition comes in. The ARX is a little finicky when it comes to magazines. For starters, as I'm sure that you've heard by now, Magpul Gen 3 doesn't work at all. Also, Surefire mags don't work, and neither do Tango Down Arc mags. Also had a huge problem with an AR Stoner magazine, which is just a cheap steel rib magazine, the exact kind that you think should work. Then there's also a whole category of magazines that work, but won't always fall free. Lancer Advanced Warfighter Magazine, Hera Magazine, and Magpul Gen 2 all fall into this category. To the ARX's defense, as the round count goes up, these seem to be falling free more often, so I guess that's a good thing. Polymer magazines that work extremely well are the Troy Battle Mag and the Magpul E-Mag. These both have smooth sides and drop free from the gun all the time. Most steel or aluminum magazines work fine, so like the HK Steel magazine and the Mako Elander magazine work great. But you also have to watch these because the Surefire and the AR Stoner magazines get stuck in the gun to the point where you think you're going to have to break either the gun or the mag to get it out. Shooting the ARX is nice. As I said before, we have close to a thousand rounds through mine without a single malfunction. The rifle flat out works. Felt recoil from the piston system is light and easily manageable. Ergonomics are good, and the lightweight of the rifle makes shooting from the standing position or on the run very enjoyable. Now for me the grip is comfortable, but make sure that you like it before you purchase the rifle because it's not interchangeable. And I have heard some people say that they don't care for it. Accuracy is another area where the ARX is marginal. At first, I was only able to get about 3 inch groups out of the ARX. Again, as the firearm broke in, the groups got better, but they're still not great. The best I can do with the ARX is about a 2 inch group at 100 yards. Now that's combat accurate and more than sufficient for battle and most practical uses. However, most of the rifles that the ARX competes with can do a little better than that. So overall, what do I think of the ARX? Well, I guess it depends on what you compare it to. The ARX is far superior to just about any of your other typical gas impingement ARs on the market. However, if you compare the ARX to the other next-gen rifles, such as the SCAR, the ACR, the VOR, MR556, and the like, I'd have to say it comes in towards the back of the pack. It's important to note that the ARX is significantly cheaper than all those other rifles, except for the Tavor, they cost about the same. My hopes for this rifle were that it would basically be a scar for a cheaper price of admission, but at least in my opinion, the ARX fell short of the lofty goal that I set for it.